Good morning. And last week was uh, turned out that uh, turned out to be there was profit out of a mistake. We ended up <laughs> doing a lot more than we intended from last week. And uh, it was kind of cool because I really, I never knew about these things. So uh, one, th one thing leads to another. We're on our way. Okay, so now we'll, we'll continue. What we've done so far, we've been talking about Kudushat Ha'aretz. We've been speaking about Kudushat Ha'aretz in terms of the uh, of mitzvot atliyot ba'aretz, in terms of the mitzvot that are applied. And uh, we spoke about two things in some detail. One is that most laws, the laws of growing, of, of what happens to do with your produce, starts after the 14 years when they captured the country. Okay, the 14 years after they captured the country. They captured and they divided up the country. And only then did they start counting Shemitah, Yovel, giving Trumos, Maestros, things like that. Then we spoke a little about Kalayim, and we spoke about Arlo. These are you're working the fields, what you can't do. The issues of grafting, the issues of waiting numbers of years before you start eating the fruit from the tree. And now we're in the next step of the process. You've managed to plant, and now you're about to harvest, and uh, you can't keep it all for yourself. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to today share, we're going to read the Rambam on Leka Chichel Peah about what one has to leave over for the poor people in the field. And afterwards, if I have time, there's a very beautiful Bryce or Tosefta that the Rambam quotes about general charity, the different levels of charity. What is the highest level at which one gives charity? And, and he works his way down. Each one, of course, is charity. You fulfill the mitzvah, but Chazal still believes that there are levels to fulfilling the mitzvah, okay? So let's get to Lechet Shech Apeya, and then we'll, and then if we have time afterwards, I like to do that, Bryce. So, so I'll, I'm gonna put up the share screen, okay? Where is it? Here we go. One second. All right, you're all here, great. Okay. Let me move this over a teeny drop. Okay, a little. Okay. So we're in the opening to Hilchos Matnos Anim, what a person is obligated to give poor people. And the opening, the opening halacha is halacha aleph, hakotzer sadehu, a person who is harvesting the field. Lo yiktsoros hasodek es kol hasodek kula. He's not supposed to harvest the whole field. Ela yonich ma'at kama la'aniyim besof hasodek. He has to leave some of the grain, the, the stalks, in the ground. He has to leave them in the ground. Shenamar lo sechale pa'as sadcha b'kutzrecha. Veleket, right, veleket, oh, we'll do the leket kutzrecha in a moment. Echad ha'kotzer, it doesn't make a difference if you're cutting it with a scythe. Or if you're just simply pulling it out, you still have to leave something over. That's, that's the pail, the edge, the edge of the field. And then he says the following. Same thing with trees. A person has a full grove of trees, let's say an olive grove, he has to leave a certain amount of trees unharvested. If, if he went ahead and did everything, now, now the rabbi I'm saying anything, what if a person didn't, didn't fulfill the positive command, uh, uh, didn't did, uh, actually transgress the negative commandment. The Torah said, do not finish it all off, and you finished it off. He has to take from what he took, he has to then go ahead and give it to the poor people.
So now there are two, there are two commandments, two formal commandments. One is not to take everything for yourself. And you must give it to the poor people. Okay. The way it means is that, that if you transgressed and did not leave anything over, you correct it through the mitzvah sase to actually give it. And that uh, Isaac, Isaac, is this referred to the corners or this is just regular stucco? We're talking about harvesting a field. So this idea of, of a, this has nothing to do with leaving the corners. It is the corners. He said, uh, Yanich miat kama. Uh, okay, so it is. He so leaves over part of a field. He leaves over part of a field and he leaves over part of a grove. Okay. Uh, that, yeah. This is what is called paya. All right. This is what is called paya. All right. And then he says, even if he already, <laughs> he didn't leave anything. He went ahead and then he ground the, he, he ground the, the grain. He then turned it into to a bread. He still has to give part of the bread to the poor. Okay. We're in the, we're in the issue of payo, leaving over. Now what happens? Avad kol hakatsir shekatsar, on nesraf kodem shenasan hapeyo. Either everything was consumed, whether by eating the food, there's there's absolutely nothing left for whatever reason. Hareza loke. Then the person is then subject to lashes because uh, because he then uh, because then he transgressed a negative commandment. He should have left it over in the field. Had he left it over in the field... I, I then, understand that... The no, one part, second, one second, one second, one second. If he left it over in the field, and then it got burnt while standing there for a reason. Who Masha He did what he did what he was supposed to do. And then when there's a fire, okay, that's something out of his hands. It's an ones that it did not get into the hands of the Aniyim, but he did what he was supposed to do. What we're talking about here is that the person never left anything. Okay. And okay. now that he took everything for himself, then an accident happened. That nothing is left over to correct the mistake, uh, to correct the transgression that he made. Okay? Then okay. the ones, it's not an ones. He, he transgressed by not, by not leaving anything. The point is, no yacholo kayem bani taklo. You have to understand, okay. this is a special case of a negative commandment. There are negative know, commandments, you transgress them, you're in trouble. There's a punishment, yes. okay? Yes, yes. This is a negative commandment for which there is an opportunity to correct by a positive commandment. So if he, exactly. if he corrects it, we're good. But here what happens is the man trans clearly transgressed. He had an opportunity to correct, and the opportunity was lost. It's in, it's okay. unimportant anymore, whether by his design or by by circumstances. Then uh, then he's liable to the punishment. That's all the Rambam is saying. No more than that. Okay. The Chaimbeleket. Okay. Now we're not talking about leaving a piece of the field over for Aniyim. But rather, you're in the middle of harvesting. V'chein beleket, kisha kotzer u'me'alem, when he is, he's cutting the wheat and now tying it into a bundle, lo yelaket ha-shibolim ha-noflos b'sh'as ha-kotzer. He should not gather the, uh, uh, gather the stalks that fell while, that he missed when he actually cut. Namely, when he's cutting the field, Stalks are left over on the floor. He leaves them. But he has to leave it over to the poor people. You can't keep the. Uh, you cannot keep the uh, the leket. 
all right? What you're gathering. And now we have the same story. Ovar Velakton, what if he transgressed and he went back and he picked them up? I feel the same story. I feel tachan Even if he, he turned it into bread. No, saying lo aniim. Shneamar lo aniva la ager to azov asam. You have to give it. You have to positively give it to them if you did not leave it for them. Of do on this refu achar shalokton kodem shenasan la aniim. If the same thing, an accident happened, he he failed to leave it for them. And now he's lost the opportunity to correct it. Look, uh, he's subject to punishment. Okay. Now, what we say with leket, okay, we also say that with, we also say that with uh, with a vineyard. The chaim beperet. Do you have to deliberately drop something or? No, no, no. You might actually. No, 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 no. no. No, like it, it, it says, lo yelaket hashi, read the Hebrew, hashi bulim hanoflos. They fall by themselves. Guy goes through it with a scythe, something, for, uh, the scythe misses something, or he didn't grab it when he made the bundle. Some of them fell to the floor. You leave it on the floor. Thank you. Okay. Yechem beperet shenifrat min ho'anavim shen bishas betzira. Now we're in the vineyard. And now what you're doing is you're pulling off the grapes from the vine. Plenty of them fall to the floor. Those are, uh, those are, uh, excuse me, uh, those are the, un, the, un, the, 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 the poorly formed, the unyet formed uh, clusters of grapes. You have to leave them to the aniyim. We're in the same situation of a of a love and neg of an injunction what you're not allowed to do, and that you have to what uh, you have to correct it afterwards. Now what happens is the harvest is finished, all the bundles are out in the field, and now they're going to take the bundles into the uh, into the storage, and they happen to forget one. He should not go back to get it. You don't go back to get it. Here we go again. The guy transgressed in either of these cases, right? No matter what he did, it's, he has to correct the transgression that he made. Here's the general rule. They are all negative trans their transgressions. That become that become changed into a positive commandment in order to correct them. Okay. If you did not fulfill the corrective act, the positive corrective act, then loka, then you're subject to lashes, you're subject to punishment. He now says, Kishem omarim kachi Okay? The same way that when you forget the, the bundles that you've made out in the field, right? The bundles are always stacked in the field, even nowadays with a uh, with the reaper, you, know, you see photos of, of, of in the field, the reapers wrap the stuff, they, they can automatically wrap the stuff up and then leave them, and, and then it continues to another section of the field. So the shikha applies for sure, even is even obvious and modern, with modern equipment. But it's true even with Koma. Namely, the guy purposely left Peo. He purposely mm -hmm. left over a piece of the field. And now he's cutting, and he forgot to, cut, to harvest a row. He just forgot it. Nothing fell to the ground. He just never, never he was <laughs> Yotzepay already. Right? He forgot, he forgot, he forgot a, a section. If 
Even with fruits of trees, when you're when you're doing a, you have an olive grow. The same laws of shecha apply. That's when you're harvesting the uh, olives. How are they harvesting the olive? Sachbot means they sort of hit the branches. They shake the branches. Chavata is is a wound, right? Is to hit something. So 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 that's how they get them down. So what's left over? Losafa erachareha. I'll, I'll say a comment in a moment. Even though the Torah only described the olive trees, it applies to all trees. This Lucifer air all of a sudden it caught, the, caught my eye. What, is, what does that mean? In context, we know what it means. Don't go back and get it. The Rambam said what the context was. But the Shoresh, it's a little tricky what the Shoresh is. Uh, it, what it is, the way the, the simple, I think the clearest explanation I saw was from Radak. There's another use of this word in Yechezkel. And there's confusion in Yechezkel that the Reish and the Aleph, it, it, there it said it, it it's in, said in, um, in, in, in the plural. And the word is poros. And there's a little confusion about the Aleph and the Reish, which way is the correct order. So it's not clear that it's the usual root that we have, pe'er, beauty. Some try to explain it like that, but Radak says so the poros are the secondary branches. You have the main branches coming out, and so for er are the secondary branches. So he's trying to say you cannot be fastidious in getting every last single one out. But that seems to be the meaning of the phrase, just... Just to uh, uh, just that particular use of that word pe'er over there, I wasn't clear about it when I first saw it. Okay, the Rambam concludes. You learn from here. In a, in a vineyard, you have to give four. There are four things to give away: haperet, stuff that falls to the ground, ololos not improperly formed clusters or unripe grapes. What you have to leave over, what you're obligated to leave over, and what you forget to take. That's, that's, so the carob there are four. When you're talking about grain, there are three, there are three mitzvot. Haleket, that corresponds to haperet, right? Okay, the stuff that falls to the uh, that falls to the ground. Okay. Ushtayim boyilanos. In trees in general, there are only shecha and peya. There is no why not or anything like that. Why not only not by the note? Why yeah, not? I mean, that, 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 the point is that we don't have in general for trees. A karem, the whole point is that karem is not. Is not a tree. The, the Torah distinguishes karem from from uh, the halacha distinguishes karem from trees in general. Whereas a zayat is a karem is a, it's not it doesn't function as a tree. So they're not in the same category. So, so what bracha you say when you eat, what bracha you say when you eat anavim? Yeah, but that's but that's after the fact. We're talking about the place where the Torah <laughs> says. Torah, you you tell me something after the fact that we're treating it like a fruit, that it's not a bore prihu adama because there are other rules that apply. But here the Torah clearly distinguished between a karam and and a zayas. So the, the way the chachamim understand it, that the zayas is the standing for trees in general, and the karam stands alone because of the issue of ololos. Okay. Uh I mean, you could no, do all the loss on a tree too. You could ask. We, we have no kefzayit. But we don't. Okay. We, we don't. No kefzayit. Mashi nishar achrei achabata. Okay. No yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Now here's an interesting law. Kol matanos aniyim elu ein bohem tovas hanao lebaolim. What's tovas hanao? So Vasana is something that belong that, that you have that really belongs to that you're obligated to give to somebody else, but you still have some residual interest in it. Namely, you can choose who to give it, to whom to give it. Namely, for example, if 
give Truma. I can give it to any Kohen who wants. No Kohen could come into my house and demand that I give that Kohen the Truma. That's my Tovat Hana'ah. I, has, I still have some residual interest in it that even though I have to give it away, I still choose to whom to give it away. But in Lecha, Chicha, Peyon, and Kerem, and all of those, and all of these, there is no such thing. They simply come into the field, and you can't say, you know, and you can't, and you can't kick out anybody and say, I only want to give it to him. You have to think about the story in Rus. It's kind of, uh, it's not, it was not always lived up to because, uh, because Boaz had to tell his workers not to give Rus a hard time, if you recall, right? Apparently, the workers were not always so nice to the, uh, to the Aniyim, okay? But the letter of the lawyers, Aniyim, come and take. Vafilo Ani Shebi Yisrael, a guy who was poor. Nonetheless, this poor fellow has a field. Other Aniyim come, Motsi and Osami Yado, he can't keep anything for himself. He can't say, I want to give it to me because I'm an Ani. No, no go. All right. All right. Next, Kol Ger Ha'amor B'Maknos Aniyim. Torah says always says like Ger La Yasom V'La Amanot Yehiya. So Yasom Amanot is an orphan and a widow who's a Ger. Ainoel a Ger Tzedek. He's a genuinely complete convert that accepts all Tariag Mitzvot. Shaharehu Omer B'Maser Sheni Ubo Halevi V'Hager. And the Rambam now quotes the, the way the Chazal learned, Mahalevi Bembris, Afager Bembris. Okay? He has to be now part of the actual covenant. It's not enough to be what we call a Ger Toshav, that you accept the Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noah. You have to accept the full Tariag Mitzvahs. So that's the formal law. That's the formal law. The Afal became nonetheless, if non-Jewish poor people come to collect, we don't we don't push them aside. They 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 join the other poor Jewish poor people and they take what is available for them. If they die alone, we have to live with everybody else. The formal law is not usually is very often not the final word to say the least. Okay. Halacha yud. Ne'amar b'matnos aniyim la'anev la'ager ta'azov osom. This is sort of an just sort of an interesting point. So I thought we'd we, we'd put it in here. Kol she, kol, so so what does that mean? You have to leave them for the poor person and the and the ger. Kol zman sho aniyim tov imosom. He says, you've let, you, you're a good guy. You've lived by all the laws of the Torah. So when you finish with your field, you're left over for them. Waves of Aniyim came. And now all of a sudden, no more Aniyim are showing up anymore. Sort of the, the full wave of poor people have come. So it turns out, whatever is left over, there are two sides to the coin. One is they don't revert to your property. All right? Any person can come and take it, even if the person is not an Ani. If a person set aside truma and no one ever collected it, it doesn't mean that you're allowed to eat it. No one. Okay, that's what he's saying. No, uh, uh, because it belongs theoretically to some Kohen and they have to come and take it. But in this case, there is not, a, there is not an Isur in the body of the wheat. It's, a, it's strictly a monetary issue. So Harei HaNishamehem Mutol HaCholodom. Anybody can come and take it. Ve'eno L'chayov L'itain L'hen Demehem. You don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, uh, you don't have to pay anything for it. You just leave the stuff on the field and they come to get it. 
But and now now there are no more aniyim, and people aren't even coming to take it. All right, anybody can rather anybody can come and take it, right? This is only for poor people. They're not here, therefore anybody can come and take it. All right, there are other details which I skip. And now halacha All right, now the issue of Eretz Yisrael, which every single one of these, we try to give a sense of what the mitzvah is. And then we talk about the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael with regard to the mitzvah. Okay. It's only in Eretz Yisrael, like Truma and Maser. Your land. Your Sadeh. Well, the only place where a Jew genuinely owns land is in Eretz Yisrael. The only example that exists in the Gemara that talks about Chutz La'aretz outside of Eretz Yisrael is about Peo. And that's the only source, he says, that's the only source there is. The Yeroyal Lee, and he says his personal opinion is, Shehu Ha'adin L'Sha'ar Matnos Aniyamelu. It's his understanding that even though only Peah was mentioned, Peah is not unique in this regard, but rather all the lekha, chicha, Peah, Peret, all of those, all of this is left for the Aniyim. Okay, being a farmer is not an easy matter, and the Rambam and the Shemona Prakim said that the purpose of all of these laws is to discourage an acquisitive, acquisitive personality, a person who draw, who struggles excessively for wealth. Person who struggles excessively for wealth. Okay. So uh, you really have to leave over, yeah. Okay. Now I would like to, uh, it's a bit early, so I, just a couple of minutes, I'd like to read a particular section of the Rambam on charity. He, he after he does all of the after he does all of the details of these mitzvot, okay, you know, how much do you have to leave? How much falls can you uh, how, how many stalks in Leket fall afterwards if, if if you if you miss too much, can you go back, can you pick uh, can you uh, too much falls when you didn't cut well, can you pick it up and now all these kinds of laws. After he does that, he talks about the general laws of charity, and he talks about uh, the laws of the Kupa Shel Tzedakah and things like that, about the, the a community has a place for Tzedakah and things like that. But now he quotes a Brysa. Basically, he's quoting a Brysa. And this is about charity in general, the charity that we do. Shmona ma'alos yesh b'tzedakah zo l'ma'alo mizo. There are eight levels, each one higher, than the other. The highest, highest level. A person who is having on hard times. He gives him a gift or a loan. He becomes a partner with him. He makes he he gives him a job to, to, to give him the sufficient support. So this guy is not a poor person. What he's talking about is because when he says Lo Lo Matana, that's not giving what we call Tsudakalania. He's talking about a person who's coming upon hard times. And the purpose of the gift is to prevent a further decline or just to give him the space. It's not he, it, the purpose of the matana there is in the same context as halva'a, shutfus, as partnership or a job. The matana here is just like a, a guy has a cash flow problem. So you give him a gift, let him get through it, and then he's on his way. Okay. That is the highest level. And the key, the key to the highest level of tzedakah is to make someone 
independent, all right? And that is the highest level. You should, you should give, you, uh, you should, usually means to grab hold of, all right? But here it means, the context is you should give him the strength. Give it to Shava Chaimach. He has to, you want him to live Support. at the same level that you are living at. Okay, that means he was originally, he was sort of at the same level. He's about to slip and you keep him going. Okay, that's the highest. Of course, if a person's genuinely poor and you give him a job, that's literally, you're even doing more. So that's literally the highest level. Klomar hachazeg bo ad shalo yi pol Namely, you prevent the person from falling into the necessity of asking other people. All right? That's the highest level. Okay. Pachos mizeh, what's next? Hanosen tzdokola aniyim. A guy gives money to the poor. V'lo yeida l'elo yodao. V'lo yeida. L'mina sam v'lo yeida hayonim imila kach. A guy gives money to poor people in such a way that it is anonymous at both ends. He doesn't, the giver doesn't know to whom it's going and the receiver doesn't know from whom it's coming. And then he gives an example. It was, a, it was called the secret office. Okay. The tzaddikim would give money there anonymously. They'd slip in there and leave some money there. The poor people who came from families that used to once live large, right? They're so ashamed, but they can go in there and take quiet and take quietly. Okay, I know that in the, in Tinek during uh, the previous two downturns, they have something um, they call, uh, the, uh, they, they had a, they, they had a uh, food bank, one person's house. People call the person who is the owner of the house and tell them that they're bringing over food. And of course, caterers brought the leftover food there. And they make sure that no one else is coming. Only the, only the owner of the house knows it. They had to organize it. So it's as close as you can get to this, all right? And then if, if the family, if a family needs, this is the, this owner of this house where the, where the food is kept, he's the only one that knows that this family is coming and he arranges for an hour for them to come when no one else will be there. So that's really, it's tremendous. It's really in the spirit of this halacha, okay? All right? They had to have one person in between, but it still turns out that the person who's giving doesn't know who's getting, or vice versa, all right? Close to this is what I'm talking about. A person should not give to a to the tzedakah box. You never give tzedakah unless you know that the person running it is as honorable. Chacham, that is, uh, the hero of the Ramam insists he's a Tamad Chacham. The commentaries note that in, in real life you can't always guarantee that. But the key is, Yodea Lahan He Kishirok. He knows how to do it properly. Okay. Okay. Pachos Mizel, what goes down? What's below that? Sheyedaha Nasein Lemiyitain. The guy who gives knows to who is receiving. Okay. We still say, namely the, the lowest, the next lowest is that the guy who's giving knows who's getting. So he's a little, we're feeding a little of his, of his personal self-satisfaction and possibly uh, self-aggrandizement. Okay. But at least we're saving the poor person the embarrassment of knowing who gave him the money. There were, the Gemara describes Chachamim, 
There was no way to give totally anonymous, anonymously. They knew where the poor people were leaving and they would leave money there and they would do it secretly so the poor people would not know who did it. The Chazero Ilasos, this is this is this is a proper way to do it. Umalotovahi. Namely, if you have no proper vehicle to give totally anonymously, this is the way to do it. Less than this. Lower than that is that the, 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 the poor person has the embarrassment of knowing who gave it to him, but at least the poor person is not embarrassed in front of the uh, the, 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 the one who give it that gives doesn't know. So that means the poor person is sort of safe in social interaction. They describe some of the rich chachamim that would uh, put their uh, ha have a hole in their purse and leave the and leave the coins in there, and then they would slip through. And then the aniim boy buboin ho aniim v'notlim kadesh lo yem busho. Okay, and the and meanwhile the chachamim would not know, would not know who took it. Okay, pachos mize. All right, a lower level. She tain lo biadel kodem she yishal. If God forbid there has to be a personal interaction between the poor person and the one, the one who gives and the one who receives, then, then the, the best way to do that is you give before the person has to has to ask. All right, you understand uh, the halacha, the halacha, the brisa, the brisa is, uh, is inspiring at a level. Uh, every time I learn it, every couple of years, I come across it or I teach it. Still moved by it. Pachos mizel lower than this. She yitain lo achar she yishal. You give to him. Okay, that's the lower. It can go less than that though. Hardly enough. Pachos uh. <laughs> Yes, it can. It can. The law is very demand. The, the law really demands that we, that when it comes to other people, we are literally. At our best. Pachos mizeh. In Bikat Amazon shel Asfaradim, we yeah. have the old version she matnata meuta veherpata meuba. Yes, yes, I hear it. I hear that. U pachos mizeh she yitain lo pachos min haroi b'seva panim yafos. You give less. Look, the formalities of having given tzedakah, you you yaitzer, but at least you give it with a smile, even if you didn't give the person enough. And pachos mizeh, worse than this is when you give grudgingly. Okay, all right. So these, uh, this is what I wanted to do for today. Yeah, here's a question, but it doesn't really specify how much you're supposed to give. You know, it's no, just, no, it, no. There is no, no. For, for that, the I have a very the, nice... the, the catch is as follows: the first one, you understand, in the first case. You know the person, and therefore you're you're fully aware of their needs. Okay, they're fully aware of their needs. All right. So in that case, at high level, you're so, namely there. You're supposed you're really obligated to give enough, or whether you whether you give enough or you put to sell. You give enough that the guy can get up back on his feet. You see, there you know what the needs are. So there you can literally answer to the specific needs, okay? The, the next lower level is you give and the, the person who is responsible, they know what people need. Like the way we do today in, our, in all the shuls nowadays, the person who is a... Uh, the person uh, who, uh, who takes care of, to love the tzedakah, nowadays are usually real contemporarily to have a, a, a social caseworker who really knows the situation of these families. So then, well, then we, we have a mechanism that in the second case, 
where you give to a kupa shel tzedakah, it's still possible to give up to their needs. And when the kupa shel tzedakah runs out of money, they let people know that their times are tough, we need people to chip in. There you can do it. After that, there's no guarantee of how much, of, of whether you're giving enough. There's never a guarantee. You are definitely contributing, but the nature of the other levels are that you don't know whether it's enough or not. Okay. Yeah. Are you obligated to completely support another person? That's pretty doubt. I mean, you have to see later in the Rambam on the details of how much you have to give, etc. But I would guess that that's completely doubtful. Unless it's a person. I mean, the Torah for relatives, it's another story. That's the whole story of Rus is predicated on that. Right? That the, uh, that the family had to redeem a field. That was lost during the uh, during the famine. The, the field of Valley Melech was lost during the famine. Family had to redeem the field. That means pay full fare for it in order to keep it in the family. And uh, and Ruiz came along with the field. So uh, so Bala said, uh, "Well, let, well, this guy comes first because he's a closer relative. He has a greater obligation." So he was ready to do it as a, as a good upstanding guy till he found out it was Rus. Okay, well, then he backed off. But Boaz then came forward and did it. But the answer is he was obligated to pull out, to put out the full money to redeem the field of the family. So the question is, so your level of, so just, I'm saying it only on my own, naively. You have to read the rest of the Ramam to get the full picture. But naively, I would say, the level of, of contact or the level of relationship determines the amount you have to give. Right. Okay. Yitzhak, if I can yeah. give my two cents, the word daka, <laughs> okay, daka. you have tzaddi and kuf, that's 90, 10, 100, so you give 10%. Okay, Marcel, if you are really want to give a lot, Dalit, uh, hey. You can go up to four, 20%. Five. You can go up to 20%. You can give up to 20%. Very good. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So okay. that's it. Okay, guys.